So this is um, uh, third part, part three of uh, Special Census Chapter 17. And last time we were talking about how do we generate the action potential. Everything, rule of the thumb, everything in order to travel within the nerve, it has to be an electrical signal or action potential, the depolarization, whatever it is. Light, you convert it to, de to depolarization. Uh, sound waves, same thing. Equilibrium, same thing. Taste, same thing. Everything has to be converted somehow into an electrical signal, which is depolarization or action potential. And here, um, in, the, in, uh, in the ear specifically, we are talking about the hair cells. So after we generate um, our electrical signal or action potential or depolarization, whatever it is, the next step is these fibers are going to go to a ganglia. And uh, just to remind you, if you don't remember from 233, a ganglia is a collection of cell bodies. So the cells, the fibers will get you into uh, the bodies and the bodies collected together, we call that a ganglia. Vestibular ganglia is a ganglia that is a collection of fibers coming from the vestibular complex. Same thing for the cochlear ganglia. So here is a vestibular ganglia, obviously coming from the vestibular complex, and this is going to continue as the vestibular part of nerve number eight. What's, that, what's nerve number eight? Vestibulococular, two parts, right? Vestibulococular, vestibular and cochlear. So vestibular will come from the vestibular ganglia, monitoring the vestibular complex, making the, the part of nerve number eight, which is the vestibular part, same thing will be for the cochlear part. And um, uh, on uh, well, Tuesday, I showed you guys these models. Do you guys remember the yellow? This nerve number eight, part of it coming from the cochlea and part of it is coming from uh, uh, the vestibule or the vestibular complex. It was two parts coming together like this, right? Remember this? So where is that coming from? Vestibular part and cochlear part, coming from vestibular ganglia and, and cochlear ganglia. Okay, so now they are, it's running together as a nerve, vestibulococular nerve. You're going to stop at something called vestibular nucleus. This is later on in the brain, vestibular nucleus. Do not confuse vestibular ganglia with vestibular nucleus. Vestibular ganglia is a collection of fibers right beside the ear. Just the nerves come together from the ear, their bodies make the vestibular ganglia, okay? When it runs all the way in the brain, it's going to make nucleus. What's the difference between nucleus and ganglia? Both of them are the same. The only difference is that the ganglia is in the peripheral, outside, not in the central nervous system. Collection of cell bodies. Outside of the central nervous system, we call it ganglia. Collection of cell bodies. Inside, we call it nucleus. So we're going to stop by two stations. The first one, is where the bodies come together and make the ganglion. You go, go, go until you get into the brain. In there, you're going to stop in another one that's called vestibular nucleus. Where is the vestibular nucleus or the plural is nuclei? It's between the pons and the medulla oblongata. Obviously, it is within uh, the brainstem. So vestibular nucleus. What exactly are you doing? Uh, I'm getting the information from uh, the vestibular complex. What's the information that the vestibular complex gave you? Equilibrium, right? Different types of equilibrium. Then, because you're responsible for equilibrium, you are going to communicate with anything else that's working on equilibrium, right? It makes sense. Your function is equilibrium. Are you the only one who's responsible? Is the ear is the only one that's responsible for equilibrium? Of course not, right? There are other parts of the body, including our brain is responsible for that. And the, the joints and a lot of other things, our uh, cerebellum, for example, there are different parts working together to keep our equilibrium, right? So since this, you have a question? Since this vestibular 
um, uh, the, uh, the nucleus is receiving information uh, from uh, the the um, from the ear. It should receive information from the other ear. This is one the two sides to keep your equilibrium. It's going to also communicate with cerebellum. I I, I know that you guys forgot it. What what was the function of the cerebellum? But um, I put it together. I always do that to make it short. BPM. If you ask me 30 years, 25 years after graduating, what are the functions of the cerebellum? I'm not going to tell you a whole page of information. No, three letters. BPM. That's it. This is what I remember. Balance, position, and muscle movement. Balance, balance. Balance, position, muscle movement. BPM. That's it. This is what I remember. Okay, I'm not going to give you like a whole lot of information. Three letters. So what's a, what's the first one? Balance. Isn't balance is the same as equilibrium? So rebel, cerebellum is responsible for, equi for equilibrium. So right ear, equilibrium. Left ear, equilibrium. The vestibular complex. What else? Cerebellum. What else? Cerebellar cortex. The cortex. The cerebral cortex, I'm sorry. The cortex itself is in the cortex will get the inform all these information and coordinate it together. This is like your highest uh, level of activities. So it needs to communicate with that as well. It needs to get some more information from the brainstem and spinal cord. Why? Because in order to keep your balance, equilibrium, you have to get information from your feet as well and from your lower limb, right? If I'm standing like this, don't I need information to know if my knee is bending, one bending and the other one is not? How can you keep the balance without that, right? So you need information from there. From there, it will go through the spinal cord and we will get information from there as well. And you are uh, in including the, the cerebral cortex for the conscious. When you hear cortex, do you remember the cerebral cortex? The cortex, the cover from outside? frontal, parietal, temporal, do you remember this? When you hear cortex, you always remember um, uh, conscious. Cortex, conscious. Anything go to the cortex, you're conscious about it. You understand it, you know it, you remember it. Consciousness, consciousness. This is your highest level, the cortex. So do you know your head position? Of course, close your eyes. I'm bending right, I'm bending left, forward, backward, rotating. How did I know, right? Just being conscious about that, not just keeping my balance. Being conscious about it, it means the cortex is included. So what are we putting together now to communicate with the vestibular nucleus that we need to remember? Right and left vestibular complex from the vestibular nucleus, communicating with cerebellum, BPM, balance, coordinating with, with cortex to be aware of it, coordinating with motor nuclei in the spinal cord coming from the lower limb. If you put all of these together, actually, the eye is also included in the equilibrium. Um, I don't know if it's coming or not, but, but just to let you know, the eye is, on, is also involved. What do you think? Would you keep more balance if you close your eyes or you open your eyes? Open your eyes, of course, right? You get extra information. I'm getting information from all over. The more information you get, the better balance you do, right? So you need to get also information. So all this information, they coordinate together through the, uh, the vestibular nucleus, and this is something important to remember. Okay, so here it is, the pathway. Here is the semicircular canals, the vestibule. Together we call it what? What do you call both together? Vestibular complex, vestibular complex, both together. From there, you, the fibers collect into the vestibular ganglia. After the ganglia, vestibular nerve. Same thing on the other side, but cochlear nerve. So in the cochlea, cochlear ganglion, cochlear nerve, they run together until they get into the brain stem. When they go to the vestibular nucleus and the cochlear nucleus, here is the nucleus and look at all these communications up and down. It's communicating with all of those. And the goal is all information possible that's related to the balance. They need to reach out to this nucleus. 
And then at the end, it will go to the cortex, obviously. So um, after that, through the vestibular uh, nucleus, this is responsible for balance. You are going to keep your balance, okay? Uh, by controlling the muscle movements, the position, um, uh, the, the head and neck movements, uh, the joints movements and all of that. You're going to keep your position. The eye is what I was talking about right here. The eye is involved also in the balance. And specifically, there are superior colliculi in the midbrain. Um, refresh your information. If you remember, that's good. If not, that's okay. I will refresh your information. If you remember, the brain, it was cerebrum, cerebellum, diencephalon, and brainstem. Do you remember this? Brainstem is midbrain, pons, and medulla. Do you still remember that? Midbrain, there are four bodies in the back, corpora quadrigemina. Do you remember those four tiny bodies in the back? Superior colliculi and inferior colliculi. This is what it is. It's part of the midbrain. Superior colliculus is the one responsible for uh, uh, this sensation, which is um, movement. If you're moving, it will keep your balance. So if I get something like this, look at it, and then I go like this, Look at it, you look. Some people will have, look at this, they look, and then you go like this. Fix your eye and, and look at this. They don't, they cannot. Because their eye keep on going like this, okay? So obviously there is an issue in this colliculus. In this case, or this condition is called nystagmus. Focus on this, he can't focus. Right, left, right, left, right, left. Don't move your eye. Try to, to look here, he cannot, okay? One more time, any abnormality, just basics. I'm not expecting a lot of information there. So this is what nystagmus means. There should be an issue in the brainstem, specifically in the midbrain, or in the internal ear. Internal ear, yes, internal ear. Internal ear give you a false signal because there is an issue there that you're moving and you start to move like this. Hearing, on the other hand, is start with air pressure what what's the sound that you're hearing when you hear sound what is this this is air waves different length of air wave this is what sound is all about okay different air waves it should be funneled in from your penna or auricle going in through what acoustic meters you guys should study as we go Acoustic meters, external acoustic meters, and end at what? Tympanic membrane, also known as eardrum. When the eardrum, because of that air pressure moving it, start to move, what's the first ossicle that's going to move? Malice, malice yes, the malice, the hammer. And this is going to move incus because of the joint, and incus is going to move stapes and the stapes oval base fits into the oval window pushing the endolymph inside start to move bending the hair cells are we following when you bend the hair cells you're going to create an action potential because of that depending on the direction and the frequency and this will will, tra will translate into electrical signal electrical signal will go from there through the nerve fibers cochlear fibers to the cochlear nucleus, to the cochlear nerve, which is part of the vestibular cochlear nerve, that's going to travel all the way. And what do you think the final destination? Which part of the cortex? Hearing. Hearing. What's the auditory cortex? Which? Frontal, parietal, temporal, occipital, which one? Temporal, yes, temporal. If you forgot it, what is your ears? Right here. On what? What's underneath? The temporal bone, isn't it? So remember, temporal cortex. This is your final destination. You guys, you guys understand now how I go? I'm not reading. I'm not going word by word. Okay, I'm explaining what you have to know. If you know what I'm telling you, 
right now, this is what I'm going to ask you about. Not because I like this part. It's because this is what you have to know. Okay? Okay, so we're talking about these air waves. And for these pressure waves, air pressure waves, there are a couple of um, terminology or uh, definitions. The wavelength. This is the, the, the distance between two waves, like this. Here is wave, and here is another wave. The distance between those is called the wavelength. Frequency is how many waves in a given time, like per second, in the case of hertz. How many cycles per second? Like if you're speaking, it should generate cycles like this. Is it fast? Like five per second, 10 per second? This is different, and this will generate different action potentials that we be perceived in your temporal cortex as a different sound. For that uh, pressure wave also, the response, the sensory response is called the pitch. The height, is it like this or like this? Okay, is, it's, it, it depends on are you talking loudly or, or, or not loud, right? Or are you whispering? It will make different uh, amplitude. Intensity is the amount of energy in that sound wave. These are just a couple of definitions uh, for us to understand. So here it is. This is the wavelength. This is the amplitude. And this is the frequency. How many per second? Um, you can read that if you want to. Uh, what I want you to understand here is... Of course, I'm not expecting you to all these numbers. That's too much. Okay. All what I want you to know is there is the lowest audible sound, the lowest that you can hear. Less than that, you cannot hear it. And it go to the maximum. Above that, it injure our ears. We cannot hear it. So there is a range, a normal range that we can hear from the minimum to the maximum. Anything within that range, we can hear it. But guess what? When we are younger, this range is big. And as we grow older, it gets smaller and smaller. Okay? What do you mean? I mean, I can hear something if I'm, I was a child. Okay? And then this same thing, five, ten years later, I can't hear it. And that, if you... Um, I don't know if you guys heard about something like that or not. It's something that's not really nice, but some kids, uh, they get this uh, uh, through their cell phones or a machine or something, and they make different sounds, and their teacher is absolutely not hearing anything. Did you hear about this before? It, the whole idea is it's under the lowest frequency of her as an adult, Okay. If you go under that, they can hear it, they cannot hear it. So I give you a signal, like, wait for me after we finish the class or something. And then you do, like, you, you respond, and I hear zero, nothing. Because it's not in my range anymore. It used to be. It's different from if you're 2 or 5 or 10 or 30 or 50. It's different. It goes smaller. So they make it under that lowest level that you can hear. Okay? So this is the range. And uh, you can read it if you want to, but just I want you to understand the concept. There is a minimum and there is a maximum uh, of, uh, of this uh, frequency that you can hear. And this gets smaller and smaller. The range diminish by age. So a, a child can hear something that you cannot hear. And you can hear something that I cannot hear and so on. Now a little bit, a little bit more details about these different ducts. Um, within the cochlea. Um, do you remember in the lab we did the cochlea already? Do you remember that cochlea? Did anybody open it to look inside? Um, a couple of you guys were asking me, what is this? If you look inside, you will see like different colors, one, two, three, one, two, three, like tr uh, triads beside each other. Did you see that? If you didn't, next time you will see it because I'm going to talk about these ducts anyway. But if you look at it, like if you get this cochlea, if you got the, the, uh, the inner ear, you say, okay, this is the bony labyrinth, this is cochlea, this is vestibule, this is semicircular canal. Some of you guys just did this, which is okay. Next time you'll see it. But some of you guys opened it, the cochlea. And you will notice different like uh, circles, colors, red, orange, green, red, orange, green, stuff like that. 
What is this inside? It's always three, 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 three. It's a triad. What are these? These are different ducts, always in the form of triad. Three, 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 three. Next time when you see it, you will notice that. Just open the cochlea. We are not going to ask you within the cochlea because the cochlea is, is like this. And if you like point to it, it's too tiny. But we have a big model. I will show you. But anyways, so the point here is if you have a cut section or if you open it, you will see these triads. These are actually ducts inside which fluid is going to run. And cochlear ducts, um, which is called this, uh, there are three of them. The middle one is called cochlear duct or scala media. Media means metal. Uh, the other two are scala. Scala means duct. Scala vestibuli or vestibular duct. Scala tympani or tympanic duct. So what is the triad? The middle doesn't doesn't change. It is cochlear duct, the middle one. And the other two are tympanic and vestibular or scala tympani, scala uh, vestibuli. Scala duct. It's the same thing. Okay. So we are talking about the middle one now. Are we following? You'll see three, 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 three. Uh, if I take one of these threes, that will give us a model that I will show you. I have multiple of those. I'm talking about one of them, three only. The cochlear duct is the middle one. And this is the most important because it contains the hearing organ. And I will talk about it. The other two are called vestibular and tympanic. And you do need to remember those three together. Um, what's the importance of this middle one? This is where the hair cells are located. It, which it, it's located in an organ that's called organ of corti or the spiral organ and you have to remember this name and anytime you see bold it means it's important it, it's the basics that's why they make it bold like this so see all these names cochlear ducts scal uh, vestibular vestibular duct uh, tympanic duct spiral organ which is organ of corti you see these how it's bold it means it's important even if i didn't say it it goes without saying it's bold, okay? So what's the spiral organ or organ of Corti? This is the hearing organ. This is exactly where we generate our hearing. This is where you make the action potential that travel all the way to the brain. This is your factory that make these, uh, th this action potential. It's called organ of Corti or spiral organ. And of course, you know the rule of the thumb, two names, remember both names, right? You don't know which one I will ask you. I'm, on, I'm gonna ask you organ of Corti or spiral organ both of them are the same. What is this um, uh, organ? Uh, it's the organ that generates the hearing signal. What are the different parts? There is a basilar membrane, I will show you guys, which separates the, the cochlear from the tympanic. And this is the one that contains hair cells, and it, it's based on the tectorial membrane. So look at this. Basilar membrane is here. Tectorial membrane, two membranes. Are we following? It is a basilar membrane at the base. There's a tectorial membrane above it. And in between are the hair cells. So when you move these membranes, the hair cells are going to bend. Did we get the idea? Basilar, hair cells, and above it is the tectorial. Basilar, hair cells, tectorial. Three together. This is a spiral organ of organ of, or organ of Corti. So look at this. If you guys had the chance to open one of these, look at this one, two, three. If you look inside more, you will see a lot of these. But I'm talking about only one of these. One, see this arrow? One. And here is one in the middle. And here is one, uh, the last one. Okay? So three. This is cochlear. How did you know? Because it's in the middle. It doesn't change. But which one of those is uh, a tympani? Which one is the scala tympani and which one is vestibuli? I don't know. I can't tell you from this picture, but I will show you how to tell. But at this point, one is here and one is there. Which is which? You don't know at this point. But of course, you cannot confuse this. It's in the middle. It will stay in the middle. Okay? Okay. This is what you saw last time, but it was colored. Okay, you'll see one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. These are the triads. Okay, so we are going to talk about some of these, like this is uh, vestibular and this is cochlear. 
and this is uh, timp tympanic, or scala, vestibuli, scala, tympani, and in the middle one is also is always called the cochlear one. Those two that are outside the bony ones, these ones contain perilymph, and this one here in the middle contain uh, endolymph. Right. So now, how to know them from each other? How to know that this is vestibular? It looks exactly like this, right? The same color. Both of them are surrounding the, the cochlear. How did you know? I want you to look deep inside this. Look at this. Do you see this purple free edged membrane? You see this? This is called the tectorial membrane. And this is on the sides of, of the vestibular duct. And look at this membrane right here. This is this membrane is not free uh, ended. This is not free ended. It doesn't have an edge like this. It's just a whole membrane. This is the basilar membrane. Look at this from here all the way. This is basilar membrane, and the basilar membrane is store the tympanic one. Can we tell now? Just find this pictorial membrane, which is free ended membrane. The side of that free ended membrane is V. Vestibular. And the way I remember it, if that's going to help you, vect, like convect, vect, VCT, vestibular, cochlear tympanic, vect, convect, VCT, vestibular, uh, cochlear and tympanic, vestibular toward the tectorial one, which is a free ended one. That's it. This is how to know them from each other. And then from each group of three of those, there will be a ganglion that take the fibers. When you generate them, how do you generate them? Look again. Do you see this membrane? Basilar membrane. The one at the base. And this one up here, this is the tectorial membrane. In between hair cells. Membrane, membrane, and hair cells in between. When you move the membranes, because of the fluid moving, you're going to bend the hair cells. Generating an action potential somehow. R going to the spiral ganglion, and you will see it. Another one, same thing. Here it is, one, two, three, VCT. This is your spiral organ or organ of corti. What are the three parts? Basilar membrane, tectorial membrane, hair cells in between. Generating the action potential running in the nerve fibers. Fibers, fibers, fibers. The bodies collect here, spiral ganglion, spiral ganglion, spiral ganglion, all of these. And then they will come together to make the cochlear nerve. Okay? We have a model like this, not, not, not this part, just like this one. Okay? So now, can you tell me, what is this one? Cochlear, vect, C, C, it's in the middle, right? This doesn't change. How about this? Which is which? Which is v, v, uh, vestibular and which one is tympanic? This is vestibular because it's toward what? You see this tectorial membrane, the pink? This is toward the tectorial membrane. So this is a vestibular one. Look at this right here. This is a, this is a basilar membrane. Can we see it here? So where the basilar membrane is tympanic. Clear? What, what is this together? This part, this structure, basilar, tectorial, and hair cells. What do you call it? Organ of corti or spiral organ. Okay? From which you have the spiral ganglion making the cochlear nerve that will run with um, the vestibular cochlear nerve. This is a little bit more details, and this picture is only showing you the organ of corti, this. They took it out from the structure inside to show you only the three parts. Tectorial membrane, free-ended, has an edge. Basilar membrane at the bottom. And in between, do you see these cells containing hair at the, at the top here? Hair cells. So what do we call tectorial, uh, tectorial membrane? Hair cells plus basilar membrane, all three together. Organ of corti or a spiral, or, or a spiral organ. Okay, so from there, from these hair cells, you go to the spiral ganglion, and then it will make uh, the cochlear nerve.
Now, uh, why with age our hearing change? Why it diminish? You see all old people saying, I can't hear much, right? What happened with age? Different things happen with age. If you are younger and the airwaves goes inside your ears, it's moving the eardrum perfectly, no problem. Moving the malleus, incus, stapes, moving into the oval window, right? All of this is moving freely, no issues, no problems. Everything is smooth and soft. But as you grow older, this uh, these membrane and, and, and joints and all these will get stiffer. It will be stiff. So when a, a tiny sound come, they are not going to move. So if they don't move, you don't hear it, right? How did you hear it in the first place? It has to be loud enough that to move this stiff joints and the membrane is not as flexible, even the round window, remember the function of the round window, dissipating energy out. How? Because it bulge out. What if it start to ossify, become hard, almost like a bone? It will not move out that much. So the fluid is not going to move that much. So the membranes are not moving much. So the hair cells are not bending much. You don't hear at the end. Did you get this? It has to be loud enough to move the stiff tympanic membrane, the stiff joints, and the stiff round and oval window. So this is a whole process altogether, and I talked about it already. Sound wave, it's pressure air waves going from your auricle, funneling in to the, to the uh, ex internal, external ac acoustic meatus, tympanic membrane, malleus, incus, stapes, oval base, oval window, moving the endolymph inside from the oval, dissipating at the round, moving these membranes and moving the hair cells generating the action potential that's going to travel um, down the uh, nerve number eight. So here it is, air waves, okay? Uh, external acoustic meatus, tympanic membrane, malleus incus stapes, oval window, pushing the fluid from one side that goes all the way back to the other side, which is a round window. So look at these arrows. This is the direction of the energy. You see how the energy is moving in from the round and moving out or dissipating from uh, the round window. Okay, until at the end, hair cells are going to uh, move, pectoral membrane and basilar membrane, generating an action potential, go to the spiral ganglion until it go to the uh, cochlear nerve. Here is the spiral ganglion. And I will show you that in the, in the lab. We can see the, see the, the spiral ganglion. But after the spiral ganglion, it's the spinal, spinal nerve. So it goes like this and go back. And by moving like this and moving back, you're moving the membranes. Do you remember the two membranes? Tectorial and basilar. You're going to move them, specifically the tectorial one. Bending the hair cells, action potential, nerve, fibers, to the ganglion, to the cochlear nerve. This is the whole thing all together. From the cochlear nerve, after the spiral ganglion, cochlear nerve, cochlear nucleus. Do you remember the vestibular nucleus? We talked about this. What's a nucleus? A collection of where? Inside the central nervous system. What's a collection of cell bodies outside? Ganglion. But both of them are collection of cell bodies, right? That's why we gave it two different names, okay? Vestibular ganglion is not vestibular nucleus. Both of them are collection of cell bodies, I understand, but not the same. So same thing here, you have a spiral what? Spiral ganglion, ganglion, because it's outside. But how about the co cochlear? It's nucleus, because it's in the brain. And this will send to something called the superior olive of the ponds. Uh, I don't know if you guys still remember or not. Remember, this is like the midbrain was like this, and the pond is like this, and the uh, medulla oblongata. Do you remember this? Uh, here, there was like two bodies here and two bodies here, corpora quadrigemina, okay? And if you move down, you will see like nuclei here and, and the nephron nerves 
Do you remember this? Do you at least that it sound like a little bit familiar? There was something here, nuclear. So this this is the olive. If you remember how how to differentiate um, nine, ten, eleven from twelve, there is something in between. Olive. This is olive, and this is your target plus the inferior colliculus. So we have the superior colliculus and inferior colliculus. Superior and inferior colliculi. What is the superior and inferior colliculi? These are the four together. One, two, three, four. I'm looking at the back of the midbrain. Those two together are superior colliculi. Those two are inferior colliculi. All together, corpora, quad, quad, regimina. Right? Those, balance, an eye, and this, hearing. Plus the olive. So by doing this, the midbrain is going to coordinate the motor response, the unconscious motor uh, response. Um, where, where, where do you end? You end, uh, you, you go through the med medial geniculate body. You're going to synapse in the medial geniculate body and then go to the auditory cortex. Where is the auditory cortex? Which lobe? Temporal lobe. Temporal lobe. Yes. Medial geniculate body. You stop at the medial geniculate body. What stop at the lateral geniculate body? The vision. Do you remember this? What's after uh, the optic nerve? Nerve chiasm. And then what? Tract. And then what? Lateral geniculate body. Now this is the medial geniculate body. Lateral geniculate body, vision. Medial geniculate body, hearing. And then what's after the lateral geniculate body? Optic what? I will ask you about this. Optic what? Optic radiation, yes. And optic radiation end at which cortex? The visual cortex, What? which one? Occipital, yes, occipital. Here, you end at the auditory cortex. So here is the whole pathway. Here it is. Look at these. Uh, uh, do you guys remember these? Here it is. The corpora quadrigemina. One, two, three, four in the back of the midbrain. This this is the superior and this is the inferior. Superior and more for is more for vision. Inferior is more for auditory function. And then it will go all the way to this. What is this? Temporal lobe for the auditory function. So that's it for this chapter.